Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to try and repair a KISS 4-in-1 ESC. I got some broken ones from you guys. The one you see here is from uh, Hellgate FPV. They are the ones that are uh, producing the Hellgate um, buzzer. The one that has a battery and uh, keeps beeping for a very long time if you disconnect your battery. And also two more exploded ones from uh, Thanos, he's from Greece. Thank you very much guys for sending me this broken stuff to work with. And uh, hopefully I can uh, repair this and uh, show the process for all of you guys out there to try and repair yours. Because we all know that uh, being in FPV means uh, spending a lot of money. And why not try and repair uh, some of our broken stuff. So those two I showed earlier have some MOSFETs taken out. This one has a very big explosion on the middle here because um, I guess there was a short or uh, something. And this one has also two MOSFETs taken out from it. But as you can see those uh, middle caps are in perfect shape. And why I wanted to start with this one is because it's a Christmas tree light <laughs> ESC. And I will show you right now. I am powering it from uh, the lab power supply with uh, 12 volt. Of course my lab power supply is limited and uh, protected. So if there would be a short on the ESC the power supply will uh, go into protection mode. So as you can see. My power supply goes into protection mode. Those uh, LEDs are going on and off. And uh, I can also hear a buzzing sound from the ESC itself. I don't know if you heard that or not, but uh, it's making some buzzing sounds. I can bet that I have one MOSFET that's uh, broken and remained closed and when the ESC tries to switch the other good one it creates a short from plus to minus. I bet that if I would um, power this from a LiPo something will explode on it. First thing we do when uh, you have a broken electronic board you first try and inspect visually for dents, burns, swollen components uh, breaks or something like that. If I am looking at this ESC, I can already see that this MOSFET package here is a little bit swollen. I don't know if you can see it or not. This one here is swollen exactly here in the middle. And most probably that ESC is dead. To be sure of that, as I explained in all my previous ESC repair videos, I need to measure continuity from plus and minus to either of the motor outputs. Because ESCs are working by switching plus and minus very quickly to every motor output. And for example, for one motor phase, we have two MOSFETs. So one MOSFET is for minus, one MOSFET is for plus. In this KISS 4-in-1 ESC, we have packages that contain two MOSFETs. So for each phase, we have one package that contains two MOSFETs. And this package here, if we look closely to the trace, we can see that it goes to this motor phase output. So I will probe with my multimeter from here to plus. So on plus I don't have a short. So we have a short on the minus MOSFET. So this one is completely dead. So I will mark it. And now I want to probe and see if uh, there are any other MOSFETs which are bad. And for that I will uh, first put one probe on the minus, which is ground, and I will probe all the motor outputs. This is the one that we marked. Now 
nothing on the minus except this one which we already knew unfortunately we have another one let's hope it's only one okay so if we look closely this pad goes to this MOSFET so this MOSFET is also that what we need to do is take these two out and for that I will uh, start my hot air gun take some flux first I will heat up the board from a distance as I told you guys earlier we don't want to shock the PCB and all the parts so we want it to reach the desired temperature for melting slowly and when it reaches the temperature we don't want to stay there too long Usually on ESCs it takes a long time to heat this because uh, ESCs normally have a lot of copper and they tend to dissipate heat quite fast. Okay guys, so unfortunately the pad underneath fused, it ripped it right out of the board and this is unrepairable because we cannot build any type of pad here and because we are talking about a lot of amps, this ESC unfortunately is dead. Now I will take the one that has good caps here and the pads here look decent but something is bothering me and that's the mess here on the power pads good let's uh, hook it up and see how it behaves when we power it up Something is fishy, something is uh, releasing some magic smoke. I don't know if you can see it or not.
Let me clean this a bit. So this ESE has the same issue like the one before but a little bit different and there is now a short here inside the PCB. If I power up my power supply you will actually see it. The magic smoke. So this ESE is 100% unrepairable because um, it has a short inside the PCB. I will take this that has all this section dead and I will take all these caps here just to see how the PCB got burned on the middle. I took out the caps and as you can see here it was supposed to be a big copper pad that was connected to the plus and here all the caps would connect from minus which is this one and also this one to the middle where the plus was. It could have been repaired but if you can see here those tiny holes those were supposed to be vias to send the plus to the other side of the board or inside the board to feed different point of the PCB with uh, the positive and this is unrepairable unfortunately but as I previously said it will do just fine for repairs. I will take um, these ESCs and throw them in the donor bin where um, I can take parts later for other ESCs. For example, the control boards are all okay. So for the future, who knows, maybe I can uh, take something out from these boards. Caps connectors or any other stuff yeah so uh, thank you very much again guys for watching and uh, see you next time